So you know how I love my Travato 59G bathroom. It's so huge, twice the size of most Class B bathrooms. Today, I address four issues and how I solve and how I solve for those issues. We're talking about the floor, the drain, soap, and the door. Stay tuned. Welcome to another Go Small, Live Large video. My name is Scott. I am your host. Really appreciate you joining us today. Um, Go Small, Live Large. We are a channel dedicated to uh, sharing the learnings that I take, that we take, uh, from being on the road. The places we go, the people we meet, and van life in my Travado, uh, which is a 2019 Winnebago Travado G floor plan L for lithium, equipped with the Volta system. And I uh, crow on about how I love the size of this bathroom. And for Class B, it is at least twice the size of most and is 100% functional. Um, I go potty regularly, number one and number two. I brush my teeth every day and floss uh, both times <laughs> during the day, morning and night. And I take showers in my Travado. Uh, but there were a couple of issues, um, and I was looking for a solution to those. And today I share three uh, improvements that I've made to my Travado uh, showering situation in particular, and that's with the with the mats. And these are real nice. These come out like that. And uh, a real quickie tip on soap dispensing uh, that's made a big difference for me as well. So let's get into it. If you have a 59G, you're gonna hopefully learn something. And if you are don't have a Travado or a G. A floor plan hopefully you still get something out of this because I was searching for a long time to find a solution uh, to, to those three issues here. Um, issue number one is the floor mats. Um, well extremely cool um, don't have they came with stick-on feet from Winnebago and they fell off and were not effective. Uh, problem number two is the drain is as a, a, a first filter that plugs up like instantly and uh, so I solved that problem. And the third issue is around soap dispensing. And I have a tip for you today on how to make that, certainly if you have a G floor plan, the perfect soap, the perfect soap dispenser for you. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the, the drain first. All right, so first the problem. The problem was, is this little doohickey right here. It's like a faucet filter. There you can see that, see through that. It fit into this little spot right here like that, tucks in there. Um, this thing fits on top of the drain like that, screws down, well, screws down like that, you get the point. Uh, the challenge is this little thing literally plugged up even though I would clean the floor, remove the mats, clean the floor, um, this thing literally would fill up about um, one or two minutes into the shower and then I had to stop and remove this thing. Um, it's a lint filter, um, it's pretty fine and it just was a hugely frustrating, so I removed it, but um, I, did want, I did want to make sure that the water was somewhat filtered before it got to the pump, which has a secondary filter, which is much finer. So here's my solution. This, so my solution is cheesecloth. I went to a Walmart, I got some cheesecloth, and it's fine enough to filter, but coarse enough to let the water go through. And let's measure the size that I need because what we want to do is measure how much we need of the cheesecloth to cover this opening. So the opening here is, I'm going to say about, I mean, the actual opening is probably four inches, yeah, about four inches. But I want a little lap over, so I'm going to say it's six. So we're going to make a six by six square of cheesecloth to cover this as and make it the primary filter. So this guy just screws on, he will stay in place. The cheesecloth covers this. Let's do that. So what we're gonna do is measure six by six here. So let's go six this way. I'm gonna go seven by seven, just for the heck of it. So there's seven inches this way. And then we're gonna go in seven inches this way, which is about right here. So we'll poke a little hole and then cut. Let's cut this way. And again, the idea here is to have this as a primary filter 
first filter for you know, hair, debris, because there is a fair amount of debris on that floor. That's why I clean it first. Uh, it only takes a second to do that. Okay, so here we have a seven by seven piece of cheesecloth. Let's put it on the floor. So again, what this is gonna do is just lay over the top here. This is gonna act as a first filter, which is great. And there's one more step. I went to Walmart and I got this. This is a peerless, um, it's like a drain cover. It's stainless steel, uh, rubber gasket. It's got a little slight bend in it, which is awesome because it, it gives just a little flex here. It fits right perfectly over the drain and it holds the cheesecloth in place. And guys, I tell you, this works really, really well. Um, and then the mat, you know, the, the tiki mat just goes over it. It actually kind of looks cool. It looks like a residential drain at this point. Um, so I really, really like that. So again, a really simple uh, solution for getting rid of that nasty, irritating um, pr primary filter. Uh, this works really well. Um, I rinse the cheesecloth after the shower to get some of the debris off, so I reuse the same one a few times. Um, this is about a lifetime supply of chili cheesecloth the way I'm using it. Um, I'll see if I can find it on Walmart and, and link it below. Um, but I found it in the sewing section. Um, that's where I found that. So let's move on to the next thing, which I'm really excited about, um, which is the bath mat itself. Let me tell you about the problem with these. Standard on the 2019 floor plan, um, which is really, they're really, really great. And again, they just lift out their marine grade plywood. You can see that it's pretty thick. I'm gonna guess, well, let's not guess. This is the measuring tape channel. So let's measure. So that is half inch, you see that, half inch? Half inch marine grade plywood, marine grade because it does get wet for sure, it's in the shower. But the problem was, and we're gonna add some more of these, the problem was these little guys right here. Uh, this is what they came with from Winnebago and they literally stuck on, they're just, you know, sticky adhesive and they've all fallen off over time. Um, pretty useless and they had no, no um, depth to them, no height to them. And the, it's a little uneven in the floor, particularly this area right here. And so this thing would slip around as I was moving it. Um, and this one uh, really slipped around and it actually snagged the, um, the sliding door. So I was looking for a solution on how can I not only stabilize these better, um, but make them um, stick more in place. So here's what I came up with. I came up with, and I looked really, really hard uh, for these, and I finally found them at an Ace Hardware of all places, is that it's a rubber foot and it's, it's, it's grippy, and it's, it's got some depth to it. I mean, if you compare these two things, you can see that it's pretty wimpy, right? Wimpy, 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 hefty, hefty, hefty. And so what I want to do is, is replace, get rid of these things, they've all fallen off anyway, except two, um, is replace with something like this. And in this case, I've actually added two, see them there? One, two, to this side, because this sits um, right here, like this, and it wobbled all the time when I stepped in here. And now it's rock solid, there's no wobble. So two of those uh, solved my height issue. But what I found is, while well, it's a perfect solution, now the middle flexes a little bit because I've actually added some height to the, the deals. So what I wanna do for you today is take these, this is what the product I bought. Again, I couldn't find them at Lowe's, couldn't find them at Home Depot. The only place I found them is Ace. You can probably Amazon search them, I suppose. Um, and these are the uh, things, you know, the grippy feet. But there's one more step and that's the screws because these screws are way too big. They would puncture through the plywood. Don't want that. So what I've got here is stainless screws that will go inside of here and not penetrate through and not split the plywood. So what I want to do for you today is actually apply these uh, in a couple more different places. Um, again, because this flexes, I don't want to flex. And in particular, the big one flexes um, pretty significantly, so I want to stop that by adding more feet. Um, so let's do that together, and uh, this is going to solve this problem of the mats moving around and not enough grippiness um, and a little bit of height to give a more solid feel to, to the floor. Really, really happy with this. What I did is I put the uh, mat back in here, and you know it has a couple feet on it already, but let's do a two-step here because what I'm finding already 
is this has a, a point where it um, needs one right there. And I think I'm gonna put another one right here. This is where I step a lot to, to brush my teeth, so that would secure this end right here. So add one here, add one here, and that will stop any, and that will stop any of the movement there. Um, the bigger mat, um, let's do this one first, then we'll do that one. All right, so what I've done is go ahead and got my screwdriver. I got the screws here, and uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put one here and one here, and that will solve the problem. I'm hoping I only need one here, because uh, I wanna put them on the other unit as well. So I put one there and one here. I don't think that's gonna do it, but let's try. Nothing like construction projects in your RV. Um, and these are sharp enough that they will penetrate the wood without having to pre-drill them. You guys see that? So let's try one here. Again, not an overly scientific way to get this thing in the right place, but... Then I'll put the other one about midway. All right, so let's test that and see if it works. So now I've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm hoping I don't need to add another one to this one, but let's test it out. All right, so I just did a quick foot test and this one that we just added needs a second one. Uh, so let's take this out. <clears throat> And what I'm going to do is actually use the screw that came with it because it's now going to be about the right height. So we'll try and preserve that hole. <clears throat> so we'll add another one on top. And in she goes. Into the same hole. All right, let me test that quick. Oh yeah, that works. Let me show you. Yeah, this is 100% better. So before, let me jump in here, guys. Back, back into the bathroom. Okay, so before this was a little squishy right here. Now it's solid and this tipped. And now this doesn't tip at all. So now when I step, now when I step on this, it's really solid. <clears throat> so let's do the same thing to this one. Now again, as an added benefit, what used to happen before is that the door would actually, because this would shift and the door would snag on this back corner back here. There's a bracket here, and this thing actually just perfectly fits um, right at the side of it. You can see that? So it really holds it in place nice. Um, but let's pull this out and do the same thing. What I'm gonna try and do is shore up the middle, because I don't have any on the middle. And so this actually has, uh, like this one in particular, um, has a lot of give. So I wanna put them down the middle and maybe just on this corner here as well. Let's do that. Let's put that on the work table, also known as the desk, also known as the feeding surface. Okay, let's connect this back to the headrest. All right, so again, the idea here is to put more reinforcement. I've got five of these things left. So let's open these up. So after careful consideration, I think this is going to be the best position. So I'm putting one here. This is on the sink side. Um, actually, I might do it like this. I probably need one more package of these, to be honest. Uh, so sink side, this tucks in by the, the toilet um, around the uh, wheel well. Uh, this is right in front of the toilet. So that should be okay. And then this is um, by the commode itself. And this is on the side with the... Uh, already interesting. Um, the door side. So I think we'll be okay. Let's um, put these in and give it a test. Uh, and then we'll talk about it. Whew, definitely no power drill here. Whew. 
All right, so let's uh, give this a test and see how it fits. Boy, it's so much better. Okay, let's kind of give it a foot test here. So we'll get really solid over here, no more tipping. Um, this feels way more solid. Uh, that is a nice, nice improvement. So I have 12 on here. It could use four more, I think. Um, this piece has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you really need, um, what, 16 plus eight to do a total job. They come in four packs. So what I think I would do is actually err on caution and get uh, four pa uh, uh, five packages, so 20 of these, um, to do the job in totality and get the little screws. Um, you have to kind of go to uh, your Ace Hardware and, and, and kind of look at trial and error. Uh, but again, these are really tiny. And these are just really tiny. This is what came with it, this one. And this is what I put it in there with. So you'll need to do some uh, screw comparisons. Um, but just really, really happy with the way that turned out. So one more thing. Oh, let's put this back quick. All right. So one more thing to share with you that I've learned is the soap dispensing. Um, get foaming soap. Number one, it takes less water. And get a foaming soap that is in a bottle of this shape. This is, I think, from Walmart. I might be wrong. Uh, the nice thing about it is it literally fits, tucks in just perfectly right here. The shower hose kind of holds it in place. And this is absolutely beautiful. And then I just am buying um, refills. I'm just buying the foaming liquid um, refill uh, just to save the bottle and go there. But wait. But wait, but wait, I have one more thing for you. And I have to give credit where credit is due. And this goes to Scott... Whoa, boy, hard to say his last name. See it over there? So I met Scott and his lovely wife at the GNR uh, Winnebago Rally, and he came in. Uh, we did some house tours. Um, I have another story about the shower pump. We're going to save that for another day. But he actually took one uh, look at my sliding door here. Oh, it's locked. Ugh. And he said it was sticking really badly, that it was not easy to move. And suggested I put some uh, lubricant on this and an OMG is this thing working like a miracle way better than even day one I can't believe it so a shout out to Scott thank you buddy for recommending me lubing my shower door let me show you what I'm using and uh, if yours sticks at all and doesn't literally move look at how easy this thing moves now that is crazy it never did that before. I had to kind of fuss and struggle with it a little bit. In fact, if I don't have it tied down when I'm moving, it actually closes by itself, which is not uh, intended. So what Scott recommended I do is get uh, WD-40. It's the dry lube, and that's the key. Wet lube is used for outside. He recommended I lube my uh, door rails, uh, but this is for inside use. And all I do literally is just give it a little hit right here like this and uh, then just run it around like that. Um, I kind of hit a few points along here. Tips to make your Travato bathroom better. Who doesn't like that? All right, so I hope you no enjoyed another um, van life video, a little Travato improvements here. Today we showed you how to uh, put a primary filter on using cheesecloth to um, not use that silly faucet filter um way less plugging had no issues actually uh since i've done the cheesecloth method uh, number two we uh, showed you how to improve the surface um solidness and non-skid of the bathroom mats using um an ace product here which uh i would run out and get this done immediately um, I can't believe what a difference it made in the floor. Uh, number three talked about the soap. Number three, number three <laughs> talked about the soap dispenser and how getting the foaming soap and using kind of the oblong looking uh, soap dispenser fits perfectly behind the faucet and the hose for the shower keeps it tight. And the fourth thing is, uh, again, thanks to Scott, is to use uh, dry lube on your shower door, uh, whether you have a K or an L, any place where they have that tambour door. Uh, the dry lube WD-40 makes a giant difference in the smoothness and operation of that of that door. 
So hopefully you took a few things away from that today. Really appreciate you, as always, tuning in. Um, please like this video if you got something out of it. That helps others find the channel. And uh, as always, love to get your comments. Q&A Fridays, you send in the questions, we answer them. And uh, just on a huge roll right now. And uh, just appreciate each and every one of you. So until we see you again in the next video, I wish you to journey on. So a bonus tip, use the same right in here on your screen door, and boy, does that make a giant difference. Here comes the rain. I guess we won't do the other thing. And I also hit it down here. And it just slides so much easier. Woo. Rain. Okay. Bonus tip.